And there's you walking up on stage just after winning. And then Eben, uh, Moss Backrack, uh, who's on the show, kisses yeah. you on stage. He kisses me. He kissed me for a long time, and it was really nice. And then uh, I think it could have kept going. Uh, it could have kind of kept going, I feel. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Uh, congratulations, man. Oh, thank you so much. How are you? How are you holding up with all this stuff? Well, you know, uh, I'm holding it up. I think it, it is one of those. Uh, I don't know. I, I think it's like I'm happy. It's I'm, I'm I'm like filled with gratitude. But I'm like I literally was just like the next morning, just like woke up and had to like pack and get on a plane and come back to Nashville. Nashville's covered in snow, and they don't know how to do snow removal, it seems. So the whole city's kind of shut down. So it's been, uh, you know, it's uh, exciting. Yeah. Do you have an Emmy? Do you have one? Uh, no, they only gave, like, uh, mine's getting shipped. We're getting it shipped. It's in the mail. <laughs> it's in the mail. Tracking Can number. Can checking Canada Post, in. send your Emmy yeah. up. Uh, <laughs> did you know you were going to be accepting the award at the Emmy? Yeah, they told, well, yeah, they told me a couple of days. So like Liza accepted uh, the Critics' Choice Award. Lionel accepted the the Golden Globe. And then uh, Josh and Cooper, two of our producers, um, they called me. And uh, I was in like a hot tub at that time. I was just in my friend's hot tub. And, uh, and they were like, do you, you're going to do the speech. And I was just like, you and Eben are gonna gonna shotgun this thing and do this thing, you and Eben. And uh, and I was like, okay. And I'm like, do you guys want like a speed? Like, what do you want? And they're like, whatever you want to do. And I was like, I'm kind of a passion guy. So I'm going to go up there. I don't know what I'm going to say. I probably won't thank anyone I need to thank. Like, no ex executives from like Disney or FX. And then, you know, Eben kind of came up and told me he was just like FX. And I was like, yeah, FX is tight. You know, I threw that one out there. So, you know, got to thank some people. So no speech prepared, no little note card in the in the jacket? No, no, no. Just passion. Just love. Love and, and anxiety and, and happiness and fear. And, you know, we were we were riddled with it was a rainbow of emotions. I turned on the TV right when you won. Like I just happened to be I, I, was, I had the TV on scrolling through. I was going through the you know, the you know, the thing on the Apple TV It's like, what are people watching right now? And it's like yeah. oh, House Hunters. You know, yeah. House Hunters is there and there's always, you know, Columbo. And then yeah. you, and there was the Emmy Awards. And I said, well, you know, I host the pop culture show. I should probably host, watch the Emmy Awards. And I clicked it well. and there's you walking up on stage just after winning. And then Eben, uh, Moss Backrack, uh, who's on the show, kisses yeah. you on stage. He kisses me. He kissed me for a long time and it was really nice. And then uh, I think it could have kept going. Uh, it could have kind of kept going, I feel. He was really into it and I, I loved it and it was really beautiful and uh, didn't really expect that. And um, oh, so also unplanned that the kissing was unplanned. You know, I would say it was pretty unplanned, <laughs> but uh, it was just like we were supposed like the thing is, is like we were up there and it was supposed to be like me and him kind of he was going to be like naming the names and doing the things. And then I was going to. Kind of at the end, it was, I feel it was supposed, he started saying stuff, and then I started just being in the background, being like a hype man, like, yeah, yeah. And it, it was kind of, I thought that was going to be kind of what it was, but then they were like, no, like, go, like, you just go. And then I just started, I just kind of, you know, I, I gripped it and ripped it, you know? Tell me a little bit about how this all happened, because you started as a consultant and then a producer, and then someone says, hey, you should act in this too? It, it all starts with, like, Courtney Storer, Chris's sister. So I've known Coco is like an amazing chef. You know, she 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 was a chef at Animal. Then she opened John and Vinny's and then she ran John and Vinny's for a long time. And now she's got Coco to go go. And then she always was just like my brother, Chris, makes like TV stuff and he like wants to work with you. He wants to do something. And I was just like, you know, years and years ago. And I was just like, yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm kind of doing my thing over here. And I'm like, I don't know, you know, meet L.A. meetings and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, years later, Chris like called me and was just like, hey, I got this thing. And like, we want you to consult. Do you think you could consult? And I was just like, what does that mean? And he was just like, I want you to like work with the actors. I want you to work with the, you know, with the art department. I want you to work with set. I want you to work with props. And I was just like, okay. And then they were like, we want you to be in the show. 
And I was just like, what do you mean? And I was just like, I don't want to act. And I was just like, acting scares the shit out of, scares the crap out of me. And, and I was just like, I don't know if I want to act. I don't know. It seems stressful. And um, yeah. And then I was like, I don't want to play a chef. And they were like, well, we don't want you to play a chef either. We want you to play the handyman. And I was just like, okay, that's perfect. Because I'm like, I don't know how to fix anything. Like, like you know, like if a door latch is broken, I'm like, I just get a new door. Or like, even like the light bulbs in our house, like Trish, Trish fixes all the light. But Trish is like, she's got her handy set and she's got like the little work belt and she goes around and tinkers all day and fixes stuff where I'm like, I don't know how to do anything, you know? So I was just like, that sounds interesting, you know? And, um, and then we went and we made the pilot. And then after the pilot was done, uh, they were like, we would like you to be a producer on the show. And I was like, okay. And then we did season one. And then they're like, we want you to be like, you're like an EP. Like you're, you're ingrained in all of this. And I was like, okay. Cause I'm there every day. Like I'm like working with everybody. And now like Coco is our culinary producer. Mm -hmm. So Coco is like the main, like she is the culinary producer. You mm -hmm. know, she's the one that's working every day on just the culinary where I'm like overarching on a lot of different things. And then um, and we work heavily, you know, together constantly. And um, yeah, and now we're just, yeah, we're there, you know, we're just, yeah. I was back to the consultant part. So like I've watched the show with people who have told me who like friends of mine who work in restaurants or like a lot of friends who used to work in restaurants and like they'll watch it, but I'll watch them sometimes putting their hands over their eyes because they'll say like it feels too real. It reminds them of like the stress they felt when they were, you know, right. when they were working in kitchens. When you were coming in as like a consultant, when you were coming in from like working in kitchens, give me an example of like one thing that the show needed to get right when it showed to like what it's like to actually work in a kitchen. Um, like there was just like little things, like, um, like when I got like, you know, set, like they filled the walk-in with food and I was like, they wouldn't have a full walk-in. If you have a full walk-in, that means your business is doing well. You know, they would have like nothing. They would have like just enough butter for the day. They would have just enough oil for the week. They would have oh, like barely enough beef. They would have like no vegetables. I was like, there's no vegetables on the menu. So why would there be vegetables in the walk-in? They wouldn't have piles and piles of napkins. They would have only enough. They would be going to like a restaurant depot to just be getting a little bit of napkins every week because they don't have cash flow. It's a dying business. It's not doing well. So we have to get, they wouldn't have all these, they would have like three pots and pans, you know, and they would all be fighting over the pots and pans. And I'm like, there's just all these like little small nuances that like, even in the script don't come through, but it's just like when we were there, I was just like, they don't have five wooden spoons. They got one, maybe, you know? And it's just like, all of those like little things was like, I don't know. It was just like a lot of those like fine tuning things. And then, and then like when we would be rehearsing the scripts, I'm like, it was, it was like we were like choreographing or whatever, you know, choreographing. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's that's the word. Hold on. Let me and, look it up. Yeah. No, it's choreographing. Yeah. Choreographing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, that's it. and so like we would be working on the way that like Jeremy would be – go. he would be able to move through the kitchen way better than all of them. Where they're spinning in circles. He's just like – kind of a shark on his way, moving around. They're a bunch of fish doing their thing. And he's always very, he knows how to move with like urgency. He knows how to move with purpose. He knows how to move with like intent. You know, he's constantly doing that. And same with Io's character, you know, like Io understands it just a little more. So like the way that they move, the way that they pivot, the way right. that they hold their hands, they don't put their hands in their pockets, you know, like all of these like little things, the way that they taste and move. And like, we would just work on that be like, you wouldn't turn like that, Jeremy, you need to turn like this. And yeah. the way that you walk, you need to walk like this. So, so who's helping you? Like you're doing this for consult, you're, you're consulting them on like how to work in a kitchen and how to like be natural in a kitchen. You never acted before, and all of a sudden you're acting with like some of like Jeremy Allen White, like already by Shameless, one of the. I mean, and also your co-stars are winning all the acting categories at all these awards. <laughs> yeah. Who's helping you with the acting part of it? Well, I'd like to shout out Ricky Staffieri. So Ricky plays my in season two. Ricky plays my brother Ted. So Ricky is uh, an incredible actor. And he like went to school for it and like has done plays and has done all these things. And he spends a lot of time with me running lines 
And also Jeremy and Io and Eben and Lionel and Liza, all like Liza is a veteran. Like Liza is like an absolute weapon. She is so incredible at acting and has been, has done so many plays in New York, Broadway, especially she just did a Broadway one. And, and like, like just, and they would be like, they'd be sweet. Jeremy, we would have a scene coming up. And he's like, Hey Maddie, let's go, uh, let's go run some lines. And so then they would give me that reciprocal. They, they would be like, like, they'd be like, do you know what you're doing? Do you know what we're saying next? Like, cause on the first season, I don't know, like you can see me not doing it. You know, like you can like, like even like when I'm standing in front of that thing with Jeremy and I'm talking about the arcade, like I'm talking about whatever, you know, ball breaker. I'm just saying the lines I'm trying to get it out. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, and I think it's just like about being comfortable and them giving me that's, I don't know. It's like all those things. It's just like, they worked with me a lot. And like, still to this day, like we're like, Eben will be like, we got a big scene. Like me, you and Lionel are going to come over and we'll, we'll get some food and we'll just like run lines. And in, in, like, we all live in like a, uh, like a condo building and we all live on one floor. So it's like literally like a dorm. And so like, we're just like, Hey, like come over, like I'll make some food or we'll get some food. And, and we just like run lines. And so like, everyone is like super friendly, super giving yeah. and um, really care for each other. Like everybody wants to win. You're there reading lines in front of like the, in the, in the video game, the arcade game in the first, and you say, you're just trying to get it out and they're trying to help you. You never acted before. You never really did anything like that before. And in a few weeks you're up for the, I got to hear it, acting award in the screen actors guild, best ensemble in a comedy series category. So act acting award. Like when yeah. you were, when you were working in kitchens, in in Toronto, like, was, would you have ever have thought you'd be up for an acting award and like a big Hollywood award show? No, yeah, absolutely not. I didn't think that. I still don't even think of myself as an actor. I don't think of myself um, in that respect at all. Like, it is like even like when they're like they're like they're like Maddie, that's your like you're part of the ensemble. Because I always think of my my brain is like producer brain. Like, honestly, like I'm, I think of the show in a very different way of like, like I'm like, like I'm reading the scripts. I'm working with Chris. I'm working with Joanna. I'm working with the writer's room. I'm, I'm like my my brain is always just like I see fact is like this other thing where I'm like, that's kind of like my side gig on the show, you know, so it's just like it, it really is amazing. And I think it just speaks to like, you know, the people around me. And it, it, it's, you know, it's a trip to say the least. Like, I don't know. Like, it is one of those things. This is like standing on the shoulders of absolute giants, you know? Oh, but, but giants in the acting world, but giants in the restaurant world, man. Like, I saw when you did the, um, when you gave the speech, I just, I just know from talking to you over the years just how passionate you are and how much love you have for people who work in restaurants. And when I saw you give that speech and you shouted out people who work in the restaurant industry. It was so beautiful. You did say, uh, what did you say? Um, we're all broken inside. Yeah, I think it's like, we're, we we work in a hospitality industry. We want, we want to take care of people. We want people to feel good while the time that they spend with us. We want them to walk into a restaurant and feel like loved or feel like they can relax out of their worlds. But it's just like, and that makes us feel really good, I think. It makes me feel really good when I see people happy and enjoying an experience at one of our, our restaurants. And I think, you know, the restaurant industry has been going in a direction that I think is really great. And we're becoming very mindful of mental health and 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 helping each other give like where's our where's our kind of end of it like we're all here trying to take care of other people in a culinary sense in a hospitality sense and then what are we doing to ourselves are we we're we're, we're not sleeping we're drinking we're do you know we're doing things to cope with life because it's just like we don't have a lot of time because you know especially like 
We're working. We work long hours. I don't care what anybody says. Chefs that are in the kitchen, they're working long hours and and it is really tough. And it's, it's like, you know, I've only worked in restaurants up until a couple of years ago and I only know what it's like to do that. And I think being self-aware of how you handle situations and how you problem solve and how you take care of staff and how you work together as a team to take care of each other is a new kind of thing. And I think it's a beautiful thing that's happening. And I think it's real. And I think it, it's it's really powerful that I'm like, hospitality needs to start with the team. And then within that, we can, it's like one of those things like, how how can you how can you truly love somebody without loving yourself? You know? And I think like that is a thing that really speaks to me. And I know that I used to not love myself. That's why I used to do the things I used to do. And and it and it's taken me, you know, now over ten years uh, of not not loving myself, and now I know that I do love myself, and I know that I do love the people around me truly, and I do love our industry, good and bad. I think it's okay to make mistakes. Do you make them again and again and again? Then maybe you got some to work on. Yeah. But I think it's it's okay to like fall. Failure is incredible. Learning what not to do is incredible. I've learned what not to do for a long, long time. And it takes a long time to fix it and to, to work on it and to make it powerful and 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 holster it and use it. And I think it, it's like, I don't know, it's the same thing. It's like re restaurant and like, we're all there trying, like we're trying to make things. And same with television. Everyone's trying to make stuff that make people feel something. And I think like that is a thing that I really connect with. And it's something that I really believe in. And I think it's like, you know, movies and TV, it's like, oh, you guys have like 150 people on set making one thing happen every single day. I was like, that's cool. I was like, it's the opposite for us. We have three or four people, five people, six people sometimes making like 70, 80 people every night feel good. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that's the thing that we really, I really realize. I'm like, just the infrastructure and the amount of money that goes into television and then the the lack of money that goes into restaurants and people want to feel you know, people, people really want a lot, like, you know, people are like, it's expensive. Why is this salad 20 bucks? Well, somebody grew it. It took 60 days to grow that head of lettuce. And then we have to take it and we have to wash it. And then we have to put it into the fridge and then we have to take it out of the fridge and we have to make a beautiful salad dressing. And all of a sudden that salad to get to a place that goes onto a plate has taken 16 hours of, of work to get there. I don't know. That seems pretty cool, but yeah. that doesn't matter. It's just people's ideas of things are a salad should be 10 bucks. Yeah. I don't know. You know, like it is one of those things where I, I think people need to realize the amount of work that goes into restaurants and, and how much people are really trying to work at trying to take care of them, you know, but then they have to feel that. So yeah. like, how do you do, you know, like it is, you're kind of in a, a little bit of a cage sometimes, you know? Well, that, that makes more sense to me now. Like why, when you're on stage at the Emmys and you have all these millions of people watching you on TV, you take a moment to go, hey, I want to shout out the people who are actually doing this work. I want to shout out the people who are, you know, the real people behind the show. I just, I, I truly love restaurants. If I, like restaurants are incredible. It, there's nothing cooler in the world to me than like walking into a new restaurant or walking into an old restaurant and looking at it and feeling, feeling like, oh, this is amazing. This is beautiful. This is like, you know, like it's still to me, like there's nothing that's, that's, that's my Super Bowl. You know, I don't love sports. I don't love, like, I'm like music and restaurants. Like those are the things that I love. And it's just like walking into a restaurant, it's like me going to a sports game. Like, I'm like, ooh, I love this. Or like, you know, like, that's the thing. It's just like, I want that feeling. I want people to feel that excitement. I want them to smell it and feel it and taste it. And it's just like restaurants to me are like still number one, always will be. Like, un unfortunately, <laughs> you know, because it's just like there isn't a lot of like, it's it, it's so tough. It's such a double-edged sword. It's like we're in this industry and I know that everyone feels it. It's just like we love, we're gluttons for punishment. Yeah. It is a very, very tough, even if you're perfect, even if you're perfect, it's still your fridge can break and you don't have the money to fix it. You can be the number one restaurant in the world and make no money. It's, it's like, you know, I don't know. It's wild. But I think that's why the bear like shows us that. It shows us the realities of what it's like, even when you're working at these places, even when these places are charging, you know, all, all this money or even when they're really hard to get into the toll it takes on the people behind the scenes. And I think that's the reason the show's doing so well. Um, I'm so happy for you, man. Like, congratulations. 
I'm so happy. It was so cool to see you and very exciting here in Canada to see you on stage um, accepting that Emmy. I love Canada. You know, like it's like it's one of those things. I'm so proud that I'm able to have me out there. I don't think I'm like I'm the voice of Canada. I don't think I'm like this thing that represents Canada. But like I happen to be Canadian and I, and I love being, you know, I love living in Canada and I Canada is the best country in the world. You know, it is like it, I, I've been around a lot of places and it's just like I'm so proud to be from here and I'm so proud to be a part of it. And like, I don't know. It's cool that people recognize it. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I do. I, I just I'm so proud to be Canadian, actually. I Congratulations, man. Thanks for thanks for doing this. Hey, thank you, Tom. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.